you all again. <laughs> You're like the Lunch and Learn crowd. Okay, um, this week we are working with two themes, but not at the same time. The plan that we had was actually that the first one theme would be used from kindergarten to grade two, sort of, and the other theme would go up into three to five. Um, they're both called phonological matrices, but one is theme part one and one is part two. However, when I previewed them, I really didn't see any difference. So we'll talk about that as well as some developments. Last night I Skyped with Melvin while I was cooking dinner and we, um, we had a big conversation about these themes in particular and how his thinking has changed and how that's going to impact us. So I'm going to show you the theme because I'm not, I think it's good for our learning, but then we're also going to talk about what could possibly happen that might be better. So to start, um, what this theme talks about are something that Melvin developed called phonological matrices. And he told me on the phone that he made these themes after, either after at the point when he was really trying to get this system to be adopted by schools. And it was to meet the need of the phonics type teachers and the people that were doing that work. He was trying to create a bridge. Um, so that's what this teaches. They are not the, the matrix that we have been talking about. It is very different. Um, they are simply phonological matrices. And they're only useful for making base words. And that's where they stop. Okay? So that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, the theme teaches that by pronouncing letter strings into a continuous stream of sound, we can build base words. And that's important because we're not going to break them up in order to make the base. That building a base word is only the start of spelling, because after that comes the prefixes and suffixes and the generation of many, many more words that are part of the family. Um, and he states in the theme that the phonological matrices are a marginal, low-level, and transitory element in establishing real spelling. So essentially, there's something we want to outgrow quickly if we use it all. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk about. Um, okay. He does talk about four terms that I learned a lot from. I'm not sure that they're terms that are going to be important for your kids at all, but I think part of the work I'm doing as a teacher is I'm having to outgrow things I thought I knew or even turns out I didn't even really know that well, so easy for me. Um, four terms. The first one is digraph, which of course has the base graph, but a digraph only refers to an element of writing. So it's only the letters as, as written. It is not the sound. Diphthong, on the other hand, only applies to vowel phonemes, and it refers to the glide from one vowel to another, usually to form a single phone. So diphthong is about sound. And some of the examples that he gives in the theme are the written digraph SH is what we use to represent the single phone phoneme SH. So when we're talking about the letters as written, it's a digraph, but when we're talking about the sound, it makes it a diphthong. And I, again, I don't think this is important for your kids, but if you're having to unlearn teaching that you used to do or you use these interchangeably or whatever, we need to get them straight. Um, another example here but is, is diphthong just the vowel, vowel one, Diphthongs right? only so apply to vowels. So, okay. right, so, so that would be for SH. So it's like Let me show you. Okay. So the spoken long A sound, which would be A, is a diphthong. But the di digraphs are A-Y, A-I, and E-Y. And if you have good schooling or good teaching, you've been doing this, then that may make sense to you. But I had never really used these terms, or I probably, if I did, use them wrong. The other term is a blend. Um, and a blend is a real linguistic term, but it doesn't, again, have anything to do with sound. It actually has to do with two words that are put together to form a new word, like breakfast and lunch blended together to make the word brunch. Um, these are also called, and I'm really not going to be able to pronounce this, portmanteau words. It's an actual set of words that do this, where two words that aren't related morphologically, like breakfast and lunch, don't have a meaning connection, but they're put together in order to create a word that works for what we're talking about. So that's really, we won't use blend to talk about, we're going to try to outgrow using blend to talk about it as anything but this. And I, and I know that I used to call it that, so then when I, last year when I shifted to, I think he called them like consonant clusters. Right, yeah. yeah. And I think he talks about that later. That's like yeah. the BL and the G. Right, and all so like FL is not a blend, but you know, I think that's good vocabulary to start, you know, changing yeah. if we are using if we can. that. And I think these are, I, I don't know if there's these come up in a theme, these kinds of words that are two separate words that become something, but I could see them coming up in an investigation. 
the kids are trying to understand how a word is spelled, and the outcome is because they are these. It's this kind of a word. That is what had happened. So that's also good to know, probably further down the line. And the last one is phoneme, which is the smallest segment of speech sound that can distinguish meaning between two words. And that's something that's going to just keep coming up for, for us and that we're going to keep talking about. So let me talk about the theme. Um, Melvin provides in, his, in the theme some ma phonological matrices that look like this. And as you can see, what they're missing is a base but they are used to create a base. And the way he recommends to do it is to read it from left to right, just like you would a regular matrix, but isolate, so you could start, sort of show it as, looky here, these, we're gonna make three words from this matrix, and we're gonna read it from left to right to make the words. You don't wanna break them up, you don't wanna say ar, m, mm, ar, m, mm. you wanna slide quickly to get to the word, arm. And it helps if you isolate as you do it. Okay, so arm. From there, you're going to make the three words and then work with one at a time. But this is where we start to build some of the practices. We would never work with a base word by itself. We always want to build other words. So asking the kids, what are some relatives? So what are some other words that can be formed from this base? This is probably happening orally where they're saying, giving you this list of words. Um, and the idea is that we want to get them used to the idea that a matrix is a machine that helps us build words. This phonological matrix only helps us build one word. A re uh, lexical matrix, I think is what he calls it, helps us build many words. So we want them to see this as a helpful machine. Um, you could then go to completing the build for the other words within the matrix. So you could take art and name out all the other words that it could make. I got to about this point in my planning for this overview, and I went, wait, what? <laughs> and I, I sort of stumbled around with, all right, I, I understand I want to outgrow this really quickly, but I'm not even sure I understand the purpose. So Melvin and I had that conversation, and he, he, this theme will not be available in his update. He's dumping this theme because it's not helpful when we know that a real matrix gets us so much further. So there's a couple of things that I'm going to recommend that you do. First of all, just to generate bases is great. And to get kids to think about other words that they could form, great. And maybe in the lower grades, this is the work that we do. We get some oral formations, okay? But from that point, and I'll come back to this chart. From that point then, I think you, you do go into a real matrix. Mm -hmm. So this is one that could be made for grade one, okay? Grade one, potentially grade two. The matrix, again, practicing reading, and then moving into creating word sums and, work and calling those out. So this gives you an opportunity in this theme in this whole next week to do that. And you can do it off many of the words that are here. You can control the matrix. And one of the things I'll talk about in a minute is they don't have to, a matrix doesn't have to have every possible word in it. You can create the matrix that's appropriate for your kids. And eventually they'll be creating matrices that they can handle. They're not going to put in suffixes and prefixes they don't know. Mm -hmm. So this is a low-level matrix. This is something that like the upper grades could move to. And you could pull these things out and just practice building the words, reading it left to right, putting it into a word sum, and, and calling out the letters. What I don't see in, and I think I hung it back up, in all the other themes and all the other kits, I don't see a, a moment when we would do this. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of assumed that we have. Right. So I think this is the perfect time yeah. to do it. Um, whether you even use the phonological matrix, to me, I'm not sure there's a purpose, but let's say we want to start with something, and I wanted to start with the word arm, and it happens to give me the idea here. If someone needs that, they could just start right from here. You could look at the phonological matrix. You could put art here. It'll give you an idea. One of the cautions, though, is you, we haven't instructed yet, and we're not in an inquiry-based format yet, but because we haven't instructed on what would happen if you have to make a change at the join, like adding a, mm -hmm. a vowel suffix, I would deliberately construct matrix matrices that don't do that. So that you can just practice with a matrix without having that other thing happen. If it does, you can just put it on your wonder wall for later, but this would be a good way to get kids comfortable with, with matrix, using a matrix. Um, so I want to give you some ideas and for everybody else, just the matrix idea. This is something that Amanda uses. You know, she blew this up on a, and laminated it. So her kids can use whiteboard markers to make their own matrix as she's doing it. And then they just, this is permanent, so they just erase it. 
So building some little frameworks like this can help kids. Also telling them that you can't you know, skip over something. Learning how to work a matrix that you can't just say arm meant, but you have to actually follow it all the way through. So lots of good ways to do that. The other thing is, there's several places where you can go either to learn more about a matrix yourself or to see some tutorials or even for your students because there are some that are pre-made. So let me show you that. First of all, in the user self-training manual, which is the big book, he talks about all the machines. So he talks about the matrix, he talks about the word sum, he talks about the vowel suffix or the, the suffix checker. He gives you an overview of all the machines. And um, Melvin invented the matrix. So the idea that this really elegant and simple way to build words, it's something that, that's just so fabulous. He talks about that. Um, the other thing is on the server last year, Melvin sent me several movies about matrix and matrices. We watched a couple of them, but now that you're in it, it may be better to view those. I've put three movies on the server that you can access. The first one is about a matrix, and then it's about spelling out, calling out words, and then the third one is making a word sum. They're about eight minutes long, each of those little movies, but I don't think they're for kids. I don't think that's their purpose. It's for you, for your teaching. The third thing is that as a school, each grade level has purchased a full kit, and one of the DVDs is the 70 word matrices, and that's where I'm getting these from, and it also has some good tutorials. It talks about the difference between free and bound bases. That level we're gonna get into later, but just the basics of building a matrix, reading a matrix, using a matrix, transferring it into a word sum is all on here, okay? So my, re my overall recommendation for this theme this week is that once student can think of relatives, I'd move right into lexical word sums. So if you know your kids can say arms, armed, arming already, let's just go there. Let's teach them how to use the real matrix. Um, the other thing is to know that upcoming themes are going to teach about vowel suffixing and doubling consonants. So although that may sort of come up, don't feel like you have to address it. You could, but then access the theme to address it. Don't try to address vowel suffixing by your old knowledge because you don't want to have to unteach something when we get to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a great week, though, because you can spend a lot of time on just doing this with kids. You can have them practice reading. You can have them practice making. Lots of things that you can do with this. Okay? Any questions?